warm good morning to all the students in the College of Education. I'm Professor Mwahabo Dainamahano, the Manager, Teaching, Learning, Community Engagement and Student Support. We are hosting the Student Orientation Seminar from 2017 to date. And I'm just going to outline the purpose of why we host the Student Support Seminars annually. The student work is divided into four stages. That is when you choose the university and you apply, you register, we teach you and you learn. The last stage is when you graduate and you seek employment. I'm going to give the purpose of why we are here. You are going to receive presentations from a number of presenters, how the lecturers will support you, the admin staff, the tutors and the teaching assistant. There will be another presentation on how to write academically in your assignments, the examinations, and why students are not supposed to plagiarize or to copy because there are repercussions for that. Another presentation will be on how you will be supported if you experience barriers to learning. And another support service that we will give is a number of emails that you can use, the contact numbers, from the university and we wish you all the best during your study at UNISA. There will be a moment where we request you to ask questions. As we are streaming, there will be a chat box where you write your questions and you can also raise your hand from the Teams platform and we will be able to respond to your questions. I thank you. We wish you all the best students in the College of Education. Professor Mahano, the SEDU Manager, Teaching, Learning and Student Support, the Acting Deputy Executive Dean, Professor Jay Serotu, School Directors, Professors Patudi and Tombella, Heads and Managers of the different portfolios within the college, Chairs of Department, Academic and Administrative Staff Members, and our dearest students within our college, our very special presenters for the three days of student orientation and support seminars, I greet you all. Today's session caters for the teaching practice students. Yesterday it was for the B.Ed. Higher Certificate, ABET and Youth Development, Postgraduate Certificate in Education Module, BPT 1501 students. A day before session, was for the B. Ed. Honors Advanced Diploma and Postgraduate Diploma students. Dear students, dear colleagues, allow me to offer my warmest appreciation and well wishes to all staff members and students of the College of Education, inclusive of the presenters today. As presenters and lecturers, we all know that you give not of your wisdom, but rather of your faith and your lovingness. You are indeed wise because you do not request the students to get into your minds, but rather you ask of all our students to follow you to the threshold of your own minds. Therefore, our dear students, ears and our ears also, thirst for the sound of your heart's knowledge. It is so gratifying, dear colleagues, that you are going to share your heart's knowledge with us and students today. This is a most special student orientation and support seminar for all the teaching practice students. In their quest to gather knowledge, skills and values that would improve their careers in life. The theme of the three days can be summarized into a simple question. How do we orientate, support, and empower our students within an Odell space? As we are in the new normal, let us inculcate a positive approach and attitude in whatever we do, as students, as lecturers, and as managers. Let us all stay focused in our specific lanes and together run the academic race. It all needs all of us as a students and lecturers and managers to be creative, innovative, 
passionate and committed in our different spaces, to become solution-oriented while keeping an open mind, staying resilient in order to achieve our goals, which is the completion of our qualifications that we have registered for as a SEDU student. I personally should be thankful and grateful to the manager teaching, learning, and student support, Professor Mahano, for organizing these student orientation and support seminars, which are currently adopted by the institution. Therefore, we have set a benchmark for all colleges within the University of South Africa to do whatever we do in the College of Education. These student orientation and support seminars provide students an opportunity to interrogate the influence and impact that our college within the institution and in society uh, is making. As we strive for inclusiveness, effectiveness in online teaching, as we begin to use the different digital modes of teaching and learning, as we strengthen continuous assessment within our environment. As we explain and clarify the challenges that are associated with plagiarism, tutor support, assignments, examinations, library usage, academic writing, questions pertaining to teaching practice, as well as the role of the accelerated Odell unit that is formerly known as the Teacher Center Project. As we ask ourselves, the big questions, how do we address barriers to learning in order to assist our students? How our students should cope emotionally in an Odell context? And how our students should deal with stress during their academic journey here at the University of South Africa? And how our students should navigate my UNISA in their studies amongst others? These are the different topics, dear students, that will be addressed by the different presenters today in order to empower you, in order to capacitate you for your studies going forward. We consider all these for the sake of student success and graduateness so that you can be well-qualified, skilled, empowered students at the end of your qualification. Yes, we all need to stay in our specific lanes as students and staff members and run with commitment, with perseverance, patience, determination, and passion. We all need to stay in our specific lanes. That in itself will bring with it good performance, excellence, and accountability inside all of us as students, as lecturers, and as managers. Performance, excellence, and accountability do not mean being the best, but they only mean doing our best in order to achieve what is planned. They only mean having an adequate shared understanding of the quality processes, being creative in order to produce quality study materials as lecturers, producing guides and tutorial letters, and being creative in responding to the assignment and examination questions as students. We therefore, dear students, dear colleagues, managers, need a culture of responsiveness and agency. Let us focus on the students as we also value capacity, building capacity and being accountable as we all increase the use of videos and appropriate technologies recording lessons and exemplar lesson plans and cherishing their associated benefits here within the College of Education. Dear students, dear colleagues, dear managers, it is through these student orientation seminars that the teaching, learning and support student support portfolio and the college ask themselves a big question. How do we orientate? support and empower our students within an Odell space. Through this question, the College of Education interprets and reinterprets its role and prioritizes its tasks 
as it sets a different and transformative outcome consistent with its vision and mission actions. It is therefore a great pleasure for me, dear students and dear colleagues, to welcome you all to this important event, the Student Orientation and Support Seminars, whose aim is to empower students in their quest for knowledge. So we believe that the presentations that will be delivered will be of assistance in small and big ways that add another touch in doing your work as a College of Education students that are registered for our qualifications. As you sit and listen to the presentations, dear students, kindly note some questions and comments that you can share with the presenters and the academic lecturers and managers, that you can share with all of us for the sake of good practice. I thank all of you very much for honoring the seminars, and I hope you will find the sessions fruitful, empowering, and capacity building. Thank you so much, dear students. Thank you so much, presenters. Thank you so much, Professor Mahano, for organizing all these seminars and enjoy the presentations and enjoy your day today. Thank you so much, colleagues. This is a message from the Dean of Students, Dr. Olwe Tusipuka. At the University of South Africa, our value is that of a responsive student-centeredness. The responsive student-centeredness reflects our commitment to recognizing, cultivating, and promoting the interests and views of students, especially their lived experiences and prior learning in order to achieve academic access and success in an open distance e-learning context. UNISA remains Africa's leading open distance learning institution. With over 300,000 students, UNISA produces a third of the country's teachers. There's been a change in the student population from traditionally workers and older to younger and unemployed students. UNISA remains the backbone of South Africa's higher education. Our message from the Office of the Dean of Students. At UNISA, the different directorates and divisions within the Students Affairs Department play a major role in connecting students and addresses issues such as student social development, student governance and leadership development, and the needs of students with disabilities. They also respond to student inquiries. With regards to COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 realities and its impact on teaching and learning, it is unthinkable that the world will return to what used to be normal. How do we as facilitators of knowledge and education and students ensure that we maximize the ever-changing pandemic moment? As Marcus Garvey once said, education is the medium by which people are prepared for the creation of their own particular civilization and the advancement and glory of their own race. Science, technology, engineering and maths education is therefore important if Africa is to take advantage of its demographic dividend, the youthful population and other resources, including the possibilities of the fourth industrial revolution. Having little knowledge is like having your hands tied around your neck, like a slave. Curriculum relevance on the part of the university and support services is aimed at ensuring throughput. You as students must keep us as the university honest, brave and on the cutting edge of curriculum relevance. This is your future. Partner with us. Good day, my name is Amukela Nguenya, the Secretary General of the National SRC. We want to take this opportunity as the student body of the university and extend our greetings to the Vice-Chancellor, Prof. 
Linga Mbule and the, the Registrar of the University, Prof Mutata, and the, the, uh, the Dean, the College Dean of uh, the College of Education, uh, Prof Sibate, and uh, extend also our greetings to the CODs, the Chairs of uh, Departments, and moreover, we want to uh, greet the stakeholders of the university, mainly students who uh, have registered for this academic year uh, in the College of Education. Uh, the, the National SRC has over the years derived its power, authority and ultimate legitimacy from the Higher Education Act of 1997 as amended. And the institutional statutes which are consistent uh, with the democratic spirit as enrichment within the South African Constitution. The NSRC remains the only beacon of hope whose avenues is to serve the student populace at large. And the NSRC holds a strongest conviction on the complete transformation of our education. Our, in the, our understanding as the National SRC is that uh, UNISA is a, is a comprehensive open distance learning institution that produces excellent scholarship and research, provides quality tuition and fosters active community engagement. It is guided by the principles of lifelong learning, student centeredness, innovation and creativity. The National SRC has a structure that has a social contract with students. We want to be honest to students, particularly the first year students. There are structural challenges that uh, students will face in the university. However, we have several victories that we have undertaken as the outgoing National SRC. COVID-19 has presented to us difficult living situation. We strongly believe it has killed student activism across the country. It is very difficult for many of our students and student activists and student leaders even in the SRC to negotiate with management because um, we have seen that uh, the arrogance that comes with management is such that uh, you, would, you, you will not do anything, you will not mobilize anybody, it's us and yourself. Uh, so we believe that uh, COVID-19 presented a very difficult uh, living condition for our people not only our people, even our students. However, as a hub of intellectuals, we have managed to persuade the university uh, in 2020 to consider having exams online. This intellectual decision was as a result of the university's decision to postpone the 2020 first semester examinations to November, uh, December 2020. What we did, uh, the National SRC has, has tasked myself as the Secretary General to meet Professor McKay and uh, we had a discussion for over three hours with Professor McKay uh, last year just before uh, the lockdown just after the president have announced that they would be locked down we engaged Prof uh, McKay for a very long time for many hours we persuaded her and we made sure that uh, we persuaded her to, to make sure that uh, uh, the examinations uh, uh, are able to be to be done in the, in the first semester, which it was June. We've seen many of our students writing examination. We've even seen them writing examination in the next semester. Uh, that was 2020. So we applaud the National SRC, the reasoning behind uh, the decision to write examination after the university have considered to postpone uh, the examination. We, we as the National SRC, we, 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 we have seen a need to talk earnestly about the teacher and the taught, the intrinsic relationship between the two. Uh, moreover, we want to ask the first year students of education whether have they thought of untrainable person to be a trained person. And moreover, there is a question which we need them to answer. What is education and why education? 
And the National SRC strongly believe that education is the process of facilitating learning and imparting knowledge. We, we want to lobby the College of Education to offer education in your own language. We want to lobby the College of Education to offer education in your language and also that is, that is consistent with your own ancestral history and your own wisdom. The National SRC wants to lobby the College of Education to produce teachers who are going to be agent of change for social justice. The NSRC uh, also have observed uh, Telopez when he said in the United Business Institute under the theme, I read a book a day. He said everybody wants a good life, but not everybody lives a good life. You are in an institution of high learning, coming from metric, others who are not coming from metric, coming from work, you have taken gap years, there are a lot of situations around yourselves. You are coming to school with an understanding that I will pass, I will pass, everything will just go away. Yes, there are a group of yourselves who are going to pass and not uh, experience any failure in the university, but there are those of you who are going to experience challenges such as failing one module and all that. That is not a life that you intended to live when you come to the university. But we are saying if it happens, you must know that fail means first attempt in learning. We are not a year as the National SRC encouraging people that they must fail. We believe that you must all work hard in your studies. But we are saying that if things go not in your way, you must not tear, your, tear, tear yourself apart. You must stand tall and make sure that you succeed. That is what we want as the National SRC to happen to our students. And we want to conclude by saying that uh, uh, we believe that all registered students of education for the academic year 2021 chose this course because they love it. They have, and they have a passion for it. We believe that we have not chosen this, this uh, uh, course because there was no space, you were rejected in other institutions. We believe that you chose this course because you love it, you have passion for it, and you want to see yourself uh, making changes in our communities, making sure that you teach um, other young kids who are at home, who are in, part, who are in all parts of African uh, uh, countries. And uh, we want to indicate to you that poor performance will always prevent poor performance. We welcome all the students and um, we wish them all the best in, the, in this academic year 2021. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Program Director, Professor Mahano, for giving me this opportunity. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, General Secretary of the National SRC, Amagala Nguenya, academics, Sejusa BEC, Office of Student Support, academics in a 30 space, directors of the College of Education, the Office of the, 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 Office of the Executive Dean, led by Professor Vade. My name is Karaboshai, Chairperson of Sedusa. Sedusa is a College of Education Student Association. It's a UNUSA student academic structure under the College of Education and the SRC. Sedusa is a representative student body that takes care of the academic affairs of a student in its environment that is devoted to excellence. My responsibility as a Chairperson of the structure is to ensure that the student gets the help where it is necessary to provide the leadership and the student receives information that can help them on time. I also perform all functions required by the branch of SEDUSA in respect of project and campaigns. Program Director, 
It is with a great pleasure and appreciation to be here on behalf of the majority of students in the University of South Africa. On behalf of the SEDUSA leadership, we would like to give appreciation for the great work done under difficult conditions of COVID-19, which for that and looking at the result, we are saying Prof. Sevade and the entire college management team, you are God sent you to us. Prof. Mahano, we as the student would like to also extend our deep appreciation for the work done at the teaching and the learning level where we have seen how the World College Collective with the Teacher Centre project have been able to deliver to us learning made easy through the various options including TP2. And I have observed the numbers of viewers per video and it confirms that indeed the college is a leader in transition under the current conditions of pandemic. The extent of the ICT project to us as students remain the greatest advantage and we appreciate the efforts by the college to reach out to us in many ways and we say thank you Seju jointly with the teacher center project management. We encourage students to be active, especially in this pandemic. Mm, how to become a member of SEDUSA? You must be a registered student. You must fill in the membership of SEDUSA at our office. And our contact details are 079-546-4877. You can text our general secretary to add to, add to add our WhatsApp groups. Our email address are atmmafafo at gmail.com. Let me conclude by giving our support to the college management as we strive to better the learning conditions of our students. The moment we are in there require us to work together towards building an ICT-friendly college of education, which is retirement of trained teacher for the classroom of the future. Thank you. Good morning, undergraduate students. I'm Dr. Donna Hannaway, and today I'm going to be taking you briefly through our undergraduate qualifications for which you are enrolled. Just briefly, the outline of the presentation is a few general points that you need to be made aware of, the importance of your curriculum, and then we'll move into the four undergraduate qualifications. So within the College of Education, most of our modules are year modules. The exception is our higher certificate modules, as well as the signature modules, and then also some modules that are offered outside of the college, which are not year modules. Please also note the important information around the higher certificate. Only the higher certificates in education articulate into our B.Ed qualifications. And here, spaces are limited so that when you complete a higher certificate, it does not necessarily guarantee you access. This is very important for you to please note and, and understand. Then, um, with regard to registration, only final year students can add a maximum of two additional modules, which will make it then 12 modules per year. All other students can only take up to a maximum of 10 modules. Now on to accessing your curriculum. This is a very important document and you need to please make sure that you visit our website and that you go to the admissions and that you choose the correct qualification and you download your curriculum. It's important to know the modules that you have to go through in your studies. I have included the link there as a shortcut for you also to take note of. Okay, our undergraduate qualifications. The first one is our higher certificate in education. This is a 120 credit NQF level 5 qualification. It is a one year qualification, but you have a maximum of three years to do it. It is a gateway into the B.Ed qualification at UNISA. But that being said, you must meet the statutory requirements to gain access into the B.Ed. It does not guarantee access, like I mentioned just now. 
The purpose of our higher certificates is so that you can meet admission requirements that you perhaps didn't meet in your senior certificate, such as the maths for the foundation phase and intermediate phase students. As of next year, our higher certificates in education is moving to year modules. So those of you enrolled now, you will notice that you're registered for semester modules, but from next year, all the modules, except for BBT, AFL, EUP and IMS will be year modules. This is important because you need to plan your studies and should you fail the module this year, you must please recognize that next year it will be a year module. And also as of next year, the module MTE 1501, which is the maths module, will be a compulsory module in the foundation phase and intermediate phase stream. Those of you registered this year, if you are intending to access the B.Ed. Foundation Phase or the B.Ed. Intermediate Phase, please make sure that MTE 1501 is one of your modules. If it is not there, you will not get access to these qualifications. Students, this is your Higher Certificate in Education curriculum. This has been set up as it will be from 2022 with the new streams, but it's an important um, piece of information for you to know already, should you wish to study in the foundation or intermediate phase or in the senior and FET phase. If you are studying in the foundation and intermediate phase, please do the MTE 1501. And then in group B, you can choose one module um, if you are doing the foundation phase, you can choose the art and handwork or the introduction to grade art teaching and in the intermediate phase, the other modules. For the senior and FET access stream, you will do eight compulsory modules in group A and in group B, you can choose two modules from the same subject field. So this is just, just to plan your studies and be able to know exactly what modules you will need throughout the year. Then our Bachelor of Education Foundation Phase Teaching. This is a 480 credit NQF Level 7 qualification. It is a four-year qualification and all modules are compulsory. The only selection you will make is the language modules which you will choose. You must please register your modules in sequence per level. And I've included a link, but you can also go to our college website and access under the announcements the Bachelor of Education Foundation Phase Registration link. And here you will find a curriculum which you can download and you can save to your device. Please use this curriculum, fill it in as you are studying so that you know which modules you've completed, which modules you have outstanding and so forth. Within that announcement is also a nice video that will help you select your languages should you be a little confused. I will be talking a little bit more about the language selection in the next couple of slides. Here is your simplified curriculum. And you will see that there are four levels of study. Each level has 10 modules. The modules in green are the modules that are offered within the College of Education. The modules in purple are the specific modules for foundation phase and these are offered in the Department of Early Childhood Education. Then the pink modules are your language options and these are the ones that you will need to select. And finally, every year ends with a teaching practice um, component. Please do register these modules in sequence and in order because it's important to build on the knowledge um, for, as we progress through our qualification. Then moving on to our Bachelor of Education in Intermediate Phase Teaching. This is also a 480 credit NQF Level 7 qualification. It is also over four years. Please note that when we say um, a four-year qualification, you do have a maximum of seven years to complete. All modules are compulsory and you can select in this qualification, your language options, as well as your school subjects and your school methodology. Please, please, please make sure that your school subject um, that you choose relates to the subject methodology. For example, if you are choosing um, natural sciences and technology as a school subject, you should then take the related 
um, natural science methodology and not life skills, for instance. Again, please register the modules in sequence per level so that the correct foundation of knowledge is built as you go through your degree. I've also included the same link, um, but this one for the intermediate phase where you can download your curriculum and a video to help you select your languages. So this is your intermediate phase program. Same as the foundation phase, the first level, second level, third level and fourth level, each one consisting of 10 modules. The modules in green are the modules offered in the College of Education. Oh, apologies. Sorry, can I start the slide? Okay. Students, here is your BEAD Intermediate Phase Programme. You will see levels one to four and each level consisting of 10 modules. The modules in orange are the modules in the um, College of Education. Your modules in green are the language options which you will select. Then you have your school subjects, which are those shown in purple, and your teaching methodologies, which are those shown in pink. The pink and the purple must please relate. Okay, students, this is your B.Ed. Intermediate Phase Programme. You will see there are four levels and each level consists of 10 modules. The modules in, in orange are your modules in the College of Education. The modules in green are your language options, which you will choose. Then you have the modules in purple and in pink. The purple ones are your school subject choices and the pink ones are your teaching methodology choices. And please make sure that you match your school subject to your teaching methodology, as I mentioned previously. Finally, every year um, culminates in a teaching practice module, um, which is a crucial element of all our programs. Please try as best possible to register per level and in sequence. So start at the beginning and go in order through the qualification. This is really important to build the correct knowledge and to have a successful output at the end of your qualification. Then moving on to your language option selections. The first thing that you need to do is you need to select your home language and this must be based on the home language that is um, represented on your senior certificate. Thereafter, you will choose your first additional language and you must please note that if English is not your home language, it is compulsory that you choose it as your first additional language. And lastly, you will choose your communicative competence, which must be different to the home language and the first additional language and um, not from the same group either. I will explain this nicely now in the next slide. So let's take Isi Kosa for example. If that is your home language and that is what is on your matric certificate, you will take Isikosa as your home language in your degree. Then English will be a compulsory first additional language for you. And when you come to choose your communicative competence, you can choose any African language except one from the Nguni group. So you could choose one from the Sutu group or the other group, or you can also choose off the cards. I hope this is clear and please also use the videos that are available on the SEDU announcements. Um, there is a nice video there if you are not sure to help you select your options. Then our Bachelor of Education, Senior Phase and APT Teaching. This is a, 400 and credit, a 480 credit qualification on an NQF level seven. It is also a four year qualification and you have a maximum of seven years to complete it. It is offered in subject streams according to the different school subjects that we have. Please note that certain streams will have slightly more credits because there are certain modules that are compulsory. And again, you must register your modules in sequence per level. This is just an outline of all the different streams that we have available at the moment. And then lastly, for more information or frequently asked questions, please check your MyLife emails regularly. 
and make sure that you claim your MyLife email account right now already and use this account to communicate with the university. Please don't use your personal email addresses because we are able to monitor and track the emails much better when it is coming from your MyLife account. And then also read all the announcements that are posted on our college website as well as your module sites for your specific modules. And then I'm just going to leave you with a quote today from Malcolm X. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for today. Please go and prepare, go download your curriculum, go understand your qualification, and then always know that we are here to support you should you need help. Thank you. I am Dr. Motladi Sitlako. My topic for today is support for student teachers during teaching practice. Teaching practice is the core of the initial professional education and training of teachers. It is an important key component of teacher education and all teacher education programs must meet the accreditation requirements of the Higher Education Quality Committee and Council on Higher Education. The Higher Education Quality Committee is a permanent committee of the Council on Higher Education. They audit institutions and their programs, accredit programs and promote quality within institutions. But nonetheless, the important role, role players supporting teaching practice are student teachers, we can't leave you out, schools, because you have to go there, school-based mentors, because they need to support you, Institu institutional supervisors, and provincial of officials. When it comes to students, students have a role to play during their a teaching practice. When you are placed in schools, you have a responsibility as a student teacher. Remember, you are on your way to become a professional teacher. So you need to know and understand the content of Tutorial Letter 101 and your teaching practice workbooks. You need to have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to be at a school for the whole day. When you go on teaching practice, you must be at a school for the whole day. You also have to learn to adapt to the ethos and organ organization of the schools. And if you want to be respected, you must always be punctual. You must always stay at a school for the duration of the teaching practice period. It is important to regard school where you are placed as a learning opportunity. Remember, you are placed in a school to learn. You are placed in a school to learn from experienced teachers. You are placed to a school. This is your time for you to learn to teach because at university, what we do, we give you theory, but now you have to go out there to the school to any school where you are placed to go and learn. So when you are there, you need to carry out uh, the task given by the mentor teacher or the principal. Remember, when you are at a school, you are marketing yourself because in a few years time, you will be applying for a teaching position. So make sure that you, you market yourself professionally. And at a school, you are allocated a school-based mentor. And these school-based mentors are selected by the school principal or the deputy principal at the school for you. UNISA, or as an institution, we have no role to play in that regard. But after meeting your, your mentor, they would provide you with a space where you uh, work and keep your material because you have gone there 
to start to learn to work, to start to learn to teach, to start to learn to uh, uh, communicate with people. That's very important. Their responsibility is to guide and help you understand the school activities and practices. They actually become role models because you identify what you like from them. Because remember, you are learning. You have to identify what you like from them. It might be the way they speak to learners, they may, the way they guide learners and advise learners and advise you as a student because you are a learner at the same time. And you develop a relationship because you want to learn from this experienced person. Maybe you also like the way they demonstrate their teaching techniques and strategies. Okay, they orientate you. They are required to, required to orientate you on policies, regulations and resources available at the school. They are also, I'm talking about mentor teach, uh, uh, school based mentors. They are also required to encourage you to evaluate your own work. You evaluate them as they teach and you evaluate yourself and reflect on their performance and your performance also. It is important. They need to provide you with feedback and advice regularly after presenting your lesson. Even after observing them teaching, you know, they need you to, they need to um, give you, uh, have a time to reflect on what they have done. Right. And also, there are supervisors that come to supervise your work. Supervisors we have internal supervisors and external supervisors. Internal supervisors are academics from UNISA and external supervisors are contracted and trained by UNISA. They have massive teaching experience. So we also rely on them. They have experience, a lot of experience. So please do not undermine them. They would come and observe and assess your lesson presentations. They need to observe your lesson presentation and they must see you in class presenting your lesson. We can, they cannot just come up with information and comments and recommendation that they have observed you when they have not. They must observe you in class. They must see you teaching, you know, and provide feedback and comments. They engage with the school principals, the school-based the school -based mentors. They also engage with you and the UNISA Teaching Practice Office. They are required to meet with you before the lesson presentation and after the lesson presentation to discuss your lesson and give you feedback. And then thereafter also they are required to help to help encourage you to complete your teaching practice portfolio task in collaboration with your mentor teacher so this means that the three of you must work together and then <clears throat> thereafter they 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 then complete your assessment evaluation form and allow you to make a copy. You must keep that copy with you for your portfolio and they submit the original to the teaching practice office. And we also have to quality assure your work. They do that, the supervisors. And your mentors also quality assure your work. But when we quality assure there are standards to observe and competencies that you need to develop. Remember, you are at a school, you are learning, you are, you know, developing skills and competencies for teaching. So they have to look at those kind of things that you are developing when you're presenting your lesson. 
So supervisors need to check your lesson plan, which is important. You, the supervisor cannot sit at the back of the class without your lesson plan. Then you need to give them your lesson plan. And whilst you are teaching, they check if you are following what you, you said you will uh, 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 teach in class. As you present your lesson, they check if you, you have or are developing certain competencies required to teach a lesson. This means they want to make sure that you maintain the requirements of teaching. They will talk to you to establish whether you have observed the mentor teacher in action, meaning that they want to establish if you, you have been given the opportunity to observe the mentor whilst they are teaching because it is an important part of learning and the school experience you need to amass remember you are going to to for you to be placed in a school you want to learn something from these experienced teachers and you know you are going to do you are going to do this over the over four years so you amass a little bit of experience i would like to leave you with these words learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. Learning is the beginning of spirituality. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Thank you, Nakenza. And goes. I would like to greet all the students for early childhood uh, teaching practice. We would like to welcome you to this discussion. We are just going to give an overall of the teaching practice in early childhood. Um, the teaching practice module coordinators in early childhood for level one TPF 2601 is Ms. Mushaba. For level two TPF 2602 is Professor Kroch. For level 3, TPF 3703 is Dr. Khabo. And for level 4, is TPF 3704 is Mrs. M. Manyaka. That's the speaker. Uh, please contact uh, your tutorial 101 for each level where you, where you will get the full contacts of your module coordinator. In your correspondences, please always include your module name, your name, your student number, when you communicate with us. Please remember that at all times. And use my life email, which is compulsory for all UNISA students. We do not accept private emails. Remember all times to use my life email. This is my photo. I'm the coordinator, overall coordinator of teaching practice in ECE. But as I said, I have my own module. You have your own module coordinators with, who are experts and we work as one team. Now, for this orientation, what we would like to really tell you about teaching practice is that teaching practice is an essential part of your initial teacher education. TP is the culmination of everything that you have studied and needs to be put in practice. You have your theory modules, but when you have that theory, all of it in your head, you need to know how you are going to pass it or to teach in a real life situation because you are being prepared to be a teacher. So this is a very, very component, important component of your uh, studies. Make sure that you master it and you take it with the seriousness that it uh, deserves. It is a work integrated learning module. You can remember that people who are studying engineering or who are doing some courses at TV colleges, they have to take time off to go and do the practical part of it because it's not the theory in their head that's going to do the job. 
they have to do it practically they need that exposure this is the same thing when it comes to teaching practice for your teaching and um, as we, we continue the purpose of the module is to give you an opportunity to acquaint yourself with formal teaching to get yourself um, acquainted or to be able to get into contact with formal teaching as i said you are now going to connect your theory with your formal teaching it also helps you to be in a practical school situation do not lose that opportunity take it with both hands and make sure that you are going to allow yourself to be exposed to the practical side of your teaching in a real school situation there are criteria to choose those schools i will not get into it consult your tutorial 102 that explains clearly what kind of schools you should do and then also it's an opportunity to apply the theoretical knowledge as i've already explained you understand the theory that you are doing but this theory must get into practice because you are a teacher after all so it gives you an opportunity that you are able to apply what you have learned in mathematics what you have learned in life skills what you have learned in technology whatever theory that you are you have learned is linked to a teaching practice so that you can be able to apply it in school it also focuses on the practical application of the various teaching and learning strategies and um, you have been taught strategies as well in the different theory modules that you are you are you are studying remember you have your teaching practice coordinators you have got your lecturers that are responsible for the theory part of your, your, your learning so what needs to happen is that when you have a theory question you still come to us but some of the questions will have to refer them to your theory lecturers so there are strategies that you are taught within the theory modules for instance there would be something that you learn from home language or from your first additional language where maybe you are teaching vocabulary they are going to teach you your your study materials are going to talk about the the the, the different approaches of teaching vocabulary for instance we were even going and online some will be in the form of videos or live teaching online those strategies you're going to apply them during your teaching practice visits the administrative part of a uh, teaching practice that i'm going to give just overall uh, you have different assignments and portfolios do not get confused you are going to have assignment one which is it's going to give you admission to the teaching practice in the level where you are studying in other words it's only for admission purposes its closing date is 25 may 2021 this is one of those assignments that you must attend to immediately after registration you go to the school that you wanted to do you want to do your teaching practice if they don't accept you you search until you get a school where you are frustrated you contact your teaching practice coordinator in your province who's going to help you find a school and then you take your assignment one to go and get it filled in the school is going to be completed there they will assign a mentor make sure that you have all the attachments that are necessary because people come back to us and say why did i only get 20 percent we get we got 20 percent because we have divided the sections uh, and these sections i have allocated marks make sure that all the sections are completed but attend to this as soon as po as possible and load it then you've got your assignment two assignment two accounts for your year mark which is 20 percent it is due on the 30th of september 2021 and you fill it in with the details that you you are going to get when you do your visits to the schools then you have also your assignment 50 which is tutorial 
103 and this is a summative assessment i'll pause a little bit you must take your teaching practice very seriously your assignment 50 is a summative assessment meaning that it's just the same as the exam that you're going to write for your theory modules it is due on the 30th of september but we urge you that as soon as you are done with your teaching practice give yourself two weeks to get all your lessons and all the contents of your assignment 50 and assignment 51 and prepare this assignment and send it to us the sooner you send them the more you are going to get your assessment your assignment marked in time the more chances that the system is not yet loaded you'll be able to to load as soon as possible and also remember keep on referring to your tutorial 101 and follow the instructions carefully so you have your assignment 50 and 51 which is 103 for 50 and 104 for 51 they are all summative assessments due date is 30th september as i said others are already in schools so you are talking to us as soon as you are done please please load it and remember your teaching practice is five weeks and which is in foundation phase to start you're starting from grade r to grade three make sure you get into the right school and do the lessons as instructed planning for your weeks in a grade for tpf 2601 you have two weeks in grade r and where you do your assignment 51 and you have got one week in grade one two and three you do your assessment 50. this will differ, differ from one uh, a level to another your tpf 2602 you have two weeks in grade r for your assignment 50 and one week in grade one, two, and three for assignment 51. They all amount to five weeks. For TPF 3703, you've got one week in grade R for your assignment 50 and two weeks in grade one for your assignment 50 as well. One week in grade two and one week in grade three all are going to be in your assignment 51, which is tutorial 104. All in all, there are five weeks. TPF 3704, Four, which is level four you have one week in grade r which goes into assignment 50 one week in grade one which is goes into assignment 50 which is your tutorial 103 and then you have one week in grade two which goes into assignment 51 and two weeks in grade three which goes into assignment 51 all of them they make three weeks and it means all in all we have five weeks I'm emphasizing this because some of you are doing two, two modules in one year. It means you have got five weeks in one module and five weeks in one module. There's no way you can do TPF 3703 and TPF 3704 in five weeks. It means all of them, they are, they are done in 10 weeks and it's advisable for you to start with one module, the lower one and finish it and do the second module and finish it. We are very much aware of the COVID-19 and the circumstances that it comes with and the challenges. So finish one module and contact us and we'll take it from there. Um, now let's talk about the expectations from you there's nothing that comes for free where there are expectations from you as well you take a responsibility for your studies we expect full participation i've already mentioned that we are going to go online we have the first one that's going to happen on the 30th march if you missed it don't worry it will be video recorded but it's much much better to join us when we are alive because we can ask questions on the chat etc participate participation means you must also be able to go online to read your materials it's very uh, encouraging when a student asks a question and said dear lecturer i've read this and this and that but i do not understand this it's easier for me to say okay that meant this and that but not to read and make me your go-to person 
becomes very cumbersome and it weighs heavily on us. We are not able to give you the quality work that you need because we just get so many emails that some of them end up being dialogues because people are not participating fully. Please participate fully. Let's not be your go-to person. A go-to person is that person that you call when you want to find out where do I find a plumber? Where do I send this? Where do I get a courier? Where do I get a painter? We shouldn't be the go-to people. You must take your responsibility because very soon you are going to be on your own. Have a clear understanding of your module. Some of you don't even know who your, 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 your uh, uh, module coordinator is. You come to us with uh, questions that are supposed to go to a theory module or is supposed to go to Miss Mushaba. It comes to me. Though we are working as a team, each module coordinator should be able to deal with issues that are coming to their desk. So please make sure you understand, uh, you have a clear understanding of your module, you have a clear understanding of who to go to with which, with which questions. If it's registration, go to registration, you come to us and say, can I get my refund? Really, we deal with academic content, but there are all the contracts are there in your tutorial 101 and other tutorials where you, sh you should know when I need a, a, something to do with registration, who do I talk to? When I need somebody to talk to, talk to me about whether I now qualify for graduation, who do I go to? Please read uh, uh, those tutorials and have a clear understanding of your module. Adhere to requirements. If you are supposed to go to grade R, some of you decide that you don't like grade R. So you decide that you will go only to a uh, grade two for five weeks we are going to give you five percent i'm warning you now or you don't attach a register a register is the only proof that we have that you went to school because it has your mentor signature it has a school stamp and all the things that we need to to know that you've been to a school we are so diligent sometimes we even call schools to find out we are not go, going to back down on standard and quality. I don't want to scare you, but I'm saying adhere to requirements. And while I'm still talking about requirements, let me say something about uh, plagiarism and fraud. It has come to our attention that there are people who are selling booklets that you, you could buy for a different level either is for level three or two or four please do not be tempted be like the others and inform us we have already submitted some names to disciplinary uh, committee we need to be honest you can cheat and get away with it but remember we are working tirelessly to protect the dignity and the image of the university that we are working and we are learning from. Why do we do that? We want you to be respected so that when you see a post and go to the district, they mustn't say, ah, 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 you need, sir. Those students are cheaters or those students don't even go to teaching practice. We are able to see your telegrams where you are saying, I've got a cousin who's a principal, please send me your, 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 portfolios they will be signed you are cheating yourself and you are only making yourself substandard and you are also affecting the image of the university which you are supposed to uphold for your own qualification you need to be respected the department of higher education must respect our qualification and we, our accreditation should still stand and be protected by your behavior. Please also complete all activities for teaching practice. There are no short lefts and short rights. There are no shortcuts. Do your work properly. As I said, it's for your own benefit. You don't want to go there and find that other students from other institutions are performing better than you because you decided to cheat or to take shortcuts. Link all the modules to theory modules. We try our best to accommodate students who are from the old curriculum 
what we do is that we post a, a study materials for each theory module that's, that is linked to the teaching practice in question. So when you go to a teaching practice, we make sure that at the beginning of the uh, uh, booklet or portfolio, you find all the theory mo theories that are linked to the teaching practice and the lecturers thereof. But we also go an extra mile and load the study guides so that you can be able to update yourself if you are a new student or you belong to the new curriculum. If not, and we are from the old curriculum, you may, we make sure that you are able to get the information or the strategies that have been added into the new module and the approaches that you might not be aware in the new curriculum so that we, we, we facilitate and support you in your studies. As I conclude, I just want to remind you, please use my life email at all times and talk to us professionally. It's only your friends that you should, when you write a WhatsApp to, you are saying, you are saying hi there, hello, it's fine. But when you talk to us, if you can check, when we respond, we are always saying, dear student, we are teaching you so that we cannot go and write a letter when you are sick and say to your principal, hi there, just know that I'm sick, I'm not coming. We are teaching you professionalism. Please apply that and say, dear lecturer, and write in proper English. We don't approve SMS or WhatsApp uh, 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 language because we are preparing you to be a professional. Uh, I will close with that. I hope that gives you an overall overview of teaching practice. Just remember at all times, this is for your own equipping so that you can be the best teacher that you can be. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Fulpelo Mukati. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Curriculum and Instructional Studies here at the University of South Africa. Today, I will be giving you an orientation to the teaching practice modules that are based in our department. My presentation will be based on the following. Uh, the purpose of teaching practice modules, the orientation of the module, administrative issues, and lastly, assessment. Now, with regards to the purpose of the teaching practice modules, the teaching practice modules are there to support students in their initial teaching experiences to give students an opportunity to familiarize themselves with formal teaching to guide them in their observation to provide students with an opportunity to apply theoretical knowledge and to expose students to a real school environment now under the orientation of the modules please I advise that you take note of the following. TPN, TPS 2601 and TPS 2602 are teaching practice modules for first year students who are registered for B. Ed. Intermediate and B. Ed. Senior and FET in the Department of Curriculum and Instructional Studies. Students are required to be at school for a period of five weeks or 25 days. During this period, students are expected to observe mentor teachers teaching and they are not expected to teach. Students should also observe how teachers do their admin work like timetable, administering attendance registers, setting tests, lesson preparations, amongst others. For TPS 2601, the teaching practice should be done at a school that has both senior and FET phases, meaning grade 8 and 9 and grade 10 to 12. For TPN 2601, students should be at a primary school that has an intermediate phase, that is from grade 4 to 6. With regards to administrative issues, 
Students are expected to familiarize themselves with Tutorial Letters 101, 102 and 103. Tutorial Letter 101 contains lecturer's contact details, assignments 1 and 2, assignment submission dates, assessment criteria and prescribed study materials. Tutorial Letter 102 contains any information related to students' placement procedures, teaching practice office contact details, role of mentors and school principals. All queries regarding placement should be directed to the teaching practice office, not to the module lecturer. Tutorial Letter 103 is, portfolio, is a portfolio template that should be completed during the teaching practice period. Under assessment, I want you to take note of the following. These modules have assignment one and two, which are formative assessment. These assignments constitute 20% of the module. Additionally, the modules have a portfolio. A portfolio is regarded as an examination and is part of summative assessment for these modules, and it constitutes 80% of the module. If you fail to submit a portfolio, you will not be able to pass these modules. It is compulsory to submit assignment 1 and 2 in order to gain admission to examination. Attendance registers must be signed on a regular basis. Plagiarism is seriously discouraged. Students who are found to have plagiarized will be penalized. Students are therefore advised to adhere to the university's plagiarism policy at all times. School stamps must be visible on the portfolio and mentor and principal declaration forms should be signed in order for a student, for a, for a student to get a pass. Thank you so much. Baya danki, kialiwuha, siyawonga, ndialiwuha. Good afternoon to you all participants. <clears throat> Let me begin by thanking the program director, Professor Mahano, for initiating the series of orientation meetings with students. And on the same vein, let me thank you again for setting the scene for the day. Let me also thank Professor Sebati, the Executive Dean of the College of Education, for ways of warm welcome to our students. And also thank the Dean of Students, Dr. Sipuka, for ways of encouragement to our students. Students indeed, an important clientele of UNISA. Without our students, UNISA will not exist. Let me thank the following. Mr. Mgwenya from NSRC representing the student body, Mr. Garabo Shai from SEDUSA, Dr. Donna Hanaway, the head of the PQM in the College of Education, the teaching practice team represented by Dr. Setlaku, representing the teaching practice office that is the administrative wing of the of, a, of teaching practice, Ms. Manyaka, representing academic department, Department of Early Childhood Education. Mr. Mukati, also representing the academic department, Department of Curriculum Instructional Studies. Let me take this opportunity to thank you all, the presenters for the valuable presentations made today. We hope our students benefited from these engagements and that in future when called upon to attend these meetings, they will come in numbers. We want these meetings to remind you all that UNISA values you as a client and cares for you. That is why we arrange these forums and many others to say to you, we as UNISA staff are available. If you want to communicate with us, Make use of varied communication media offered by the institution. 
please know that without you, the institution will not exist. You are a valuable component of this institution. Today is a teaching practice day, work integrated learning, what is known again as practical learning, one of the five types of learning associated with acquisition, integration, and application of knowledge for teaching purposes, spelled out as core to teacher education programs. Teaching practice is an important component of your B. Ed. and PGCE studies. Please remember that you will not be awarded a degree if you do not successfully complete your full teaching practice program, which begins with your first year level of studies to your fourth year level of studies, five weeks for each year. Treat teaching practice with the same importance you give to your content modules. Make sure that you prioritize the acquisition of the practical learning component of your program. We had stories in the past of students buying teaching practice. That is buying more books from those who completed before them. And these are normally brought to our attention as students communicate with the one another on the social media. I'm going to urge you today and ask you and advise you, desist from this practice. For this practice will not equip you with teaching skills needed when faced with a class of your own. View your teaching practice as both skills acquisition and a moral imperative. As UNISA, we aspire to produce well-rounded individuals fit to be role models to children they will teach. Teaching practice involves learning in and from practice. Make sure that you are involved in both. We are going to provide you with videos, lesson observation, case studies, among others, for you to analyze. At the present moment, we are in the process of reviewing our teaching practice to be a COVID-19 compliant and we're going to make sure that this model of teaching practice, of learning from practice, is addressed. Teaching practice that involves learning in practice has been called to our teaching practice model here at UNISA. The teaching practice office will still be involved in placing you in schools. Please, as emphasized by the presenters, especially Dr. Sitlapo, you do not have to place yourself, but the office places you. The reason being that only accredited sites are recognized by the institution and accrediting bodies. Teaching practice done in an accredited site might be regarded as redundant and unlawful. I would like to thank the teaching practice team for bringing these aspects to the fore. Practical learning is an important competence. And this can be used to evaluate the, the quality of the programs that we offer here at UNISA. And if we as UNISA have to pass the grade as an institution, the teaching acumen and abilities of our students should be above board and unquestionable. It is your performance in the classroom which will be used to assess our programs. If poor, it says negative about our programs. I would therefore like to urge you to treat teaching practice with the agency, honesty, and importance it deserves. To be seen as diligent and competent to prospective employers, that journey begins with you. Make sure that you dedicate time to go to schools and acquire practical learning in authentic environments. Make teaching practice your priority. Without it, you will not be awarded a degree. Remember our country, South Africa, it needs dedicated and capable teachers with good teaching skills. To those of you who begin this journey now in 2021, 
as first year students, I want to take this opportunity to wish you good luck in your four year stay of your studies. Some it will even take you more. And remember that UNISA is here to support you. For any queries, any challenges that you experience, you have your module coordinators and those module coordinators names, you can find them in your tutorial letters. In conclusion, let me thank everyone who participated in this meeting, including the presenters and also the, the students. It's your participation as students and engagement that inspire us and want to do more. We look forward to further fruitful meetings with you. I thank you all.